Next speaker from Erbil, Dr. Saud Nizar Jurjis. He is an interventional neurologist. He is a fellow of Iraqi Board of Medical Specialization since, 2000, uh, since 2010 and uh, graduated from Medical College at 2003. He currently uh, had, he had uh, ISMIN stroke diploma and uh, specific neurointerventional training at Turkey and uh, currently working at uh, Rizgari Teaching Hospital in Erbil. He will tell us about the RTPA in ischemic stroke and about their experience at Erbil City. The word is yours, Dr. Sowood. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for everyone for the attending uh, this webinar. And uh, special thanks for uh, our teacher, uh, Dr. Samad Al Fahed, and for uh, Dr. Muhtaz, and for Ustad Hassan Al Hamdani for attending uh, our talks. So, uh, I will try now. Okay. Hey, Doctor. So, Go on. Okay, so I try to share now my um sorry. Okay. Is it clear now? Yeah, my screen is the screen of the audio. Sorry. Is it clear now? No, I'm not here. Okay. So uh, I will talk uh, about the RTPA in ischemic stroke and uh, our experience uh, in Erbil City in uh, managing and caring stroke patients. Uh, so uh, out of place, uh, RTPA or uh, alta place is a thrombolytic agent that's manufactured by recombinant DNA technology. It is FDA approved for use in acute ischemic stroke, pulmonary embolism, and acute myocardial infarction. Alta place is a fibrinolytic agent. It, it also is referred to as tissue plasminogen activator. So it's a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator that converts plasminogen to the proteolytic enzyme plasmin, which lyses fibrin as well as fibrinogen. Intravenous outplace is cleared primarily by the liver with an initial half-life of fewer than five minutes and a terminal half-life of 72 minutes. So starting with the, uh, the, the uh, administration of RTPA started with the NINDS trial, uh, where they started to give RTPA within three hours to a uh, number of patients, and they found that uh, patients have about 30% respond in 90 days better than uh, control patients, better than controls. Then the ECAS trial, ECAS, ECAS 3 trial has come to extend the RTPA window to four and a half hours. And then the extend trial extended uh, that uh, uh, they tried RTPA in wake up stroke uh, in between uh, in th those unknown uh, time or onset of the stroke. They extended to about nine hours, giving uh, RTPA, but for selected patients with specific uh, neuroimaging uh, features like uh, uh, diffusion weighted uh, flare mismatch. So the recommended dose is 0.9 milligram per kg, and the total dose should not exceed 90 milligram. And 10% of the total dose gets administered as an intravenous bolus over one minute. And the remainder will be infused over 60 minutes. So who can receive RTPA? Those patients who 
uh, uh, have stroke that causing a measurable neurological deficit. We mean uh, either it is the NIH score is more than five or even if less than five, but if it is measurable, uh, uh, disabling stroke like dysphasia or homonymous hemianopia, we can give them RTPA. And the onset should be less than 4.5 hours before beginning treatment. If the exact time of the stroke onset is not known, it's defined as the last time the patient was known to be normal. And the age should be more or than uh, or equal to uh, 18 years. So the exclusion criteria uh, is that patients who have severe head trauma or ischemic stroke in the previous three months cannot receive RTPA. And patients with intracranial hemorrhage, patients with, with previous intracranial hemorrhage, patients with intra-axial intracranial neoplasmas, gastrointestinal malignancy, uh, gastrointestinal hemorrhage within previous 21 days, and intracranial or transspinal surgery within the previous three months. These were points in the, in the history. Regarding clinically, if we have features that suggestive of subarachnoid hemorrhage, or persistent blood pressure that is the systolic more than 185 or diastolic more than 110, or if there's active internal bleeding or features of infective endocarditis or aortic arch dissec dissection are exclusion criteria for RTPA. Hematologically, platelet counts of less than 100,000 or current warfarin with abnormal INR or PT or PTT, prolong it, uh, or therapeutic low molecular weight heparins uh, receiving within 24 hours, or uh, new, uh, new oral anticoagulants uh, received within 48 hours with the evidence of abnormal Throw, uh, abnormal uh, with the evidence of abnormal laboratory uh, results like abnormal APT or INR or e carrying clotting time or thrombin time. And uh, also presence of hemorrhage in the CT or extensive regions of obvious hypodensity consistent with irreversible injury. Uh, what about the complications? So we have two important considering com complications in RTPA. That is symptomatic intracerebral hemorrhage, which accounts for two to seven percent. So, so this point should be discussed with the uh, family of the patient or the patient is, uh, himself uh, regarding the risk of hemorrhage. And the second is the orally, orolingual angioedema. So if there is intracerebral hemorrhage, uh, we should stop LTPLase infusion immediately and send for urgent CT and uh, for CBC, PT, APTT, fibrinogen level and type and cross match. And we start to give cryoprecipitate or tranexamic acid if cry cryoprecipitate is not available or patient is not suitable to take it. And hematological and neurosurgical consultation is mandatory also. Supportive therapy, including blood pressure management, monitoring of intracranial pressure, temperature, and glucose control. In orolingual angioedema, endotracted patient may be indicated, but uh, if the edema is limited to anterior tongue and lips, uh, lips, uh, there is uh, no in, uh, uh, this no, uh, not indicated for edema, uh, for uh, endotracheal intubation. It's indicated if there is uh, the floor of the mouth or the palate or oropharynx, uh, and if there is a rapid progression of this edema within 30 minutes. And uh, awake fiber optic intubation is optimal uh, in these patients. Um, then we discontinue IV alteplase, of course, and we administer intravenous methylprednisolone, diphenhydramine, uh, ranitidine. Uh, also, if the angioedema continues, we can administer epinephrine too.
So these were for a few points about RTPA. And uh, now I'll talk about our experience uh, regarding stroke care. So we started uh, since 2010, we admitted stroke patients in the neurology ward in Rizgari Teaching Hospital. Patients mostly uh, received uh, at that time uh, uh, care or, and secondary preventive treatment and critical cases have been admitted in the ICU unit uh, of the hospital and cases who needed surgical intervention have been referred to neurosurgical department. Since 2018, RTPA have been administered to selective patients. So in 2018 and 2019, about 16 patients have received RTPA at emergency room and ICU. Nine of them were males and seven females. And all but one of them received RTPA within first three hours. Nine patients, that means 57% of patients, recovered completely or completely. That SARS was about uh, two in the, uh, the follow-up. Four patients recovered partially or follow-up was not done completely. Three patients died, two patients due to large vessel occlusion with big infarction sizes. One of them developed small hemorrhage. Most probable causes of this were pneumonia. That's mean in, not directly related to RTPA. In 2020-2021, with COVID challenges, it was uh, difficult to administer RTPA in time. Uh, so uh, the uh, cases uh, have been diminished re receiving RTPA and recordings were also reporting documentation were difficult. So uh, these are some cases who are recorded uh, at that time. And uh, so a case, a case a 50 year old male smoker, hypertensive with a right MCA infarction and NIH score uh, received RTPA, NIH score changed from six to three and there was no complication. Another patient for diabetic and hypertension with left MCA infarction uh, received RTPA and NIH score changed from eight to two with no complications. Another patient, 45 year old female with right MCA infarction with dramatic response after two hours, received TPA with 90 year old male patient also uh, uh, de uh, developed uh, present with right cellular weakness and complete facial weakness with NIH score eight, received RTPA within four hours, but failed to respond. That was the NIH score after 48 hours was, was the same, and there was no complications. 70 year old female patient with MCA stroke, NIH score 18, and uh, the time was two, two hours, received within two hours, RTPA, and also failed to respond with no complication. So uh, the, recently, we have given RTPA to this patient with 55-year-old male who was 55-year-old male, was smoker, hypensive, and diabetic, presented with left side, upper limb, and lower limb weakness, uh, grade zero, and partial facial weakness. NIH score was 10. RTPA given at 2.5 hours. After NIH score, uh, the, their scores reduced uh, to three. So I would 